very good morning to all of you uh, we warmly welcome for today's special cpd program which is under the research development program uh, on behalf of all medical officers so during this session we kindly request you to mute your microphones and switch off your cameras to avoid any interruption during the session today cpd on the topic of how to use C spss for research activity hopefully we expect that uh, you have downloaded the spss software and also have downloaded the data sheet which we have sent to you via email today's speaker is dr suman nandasena the deputy director of regional deputy director of health services now i invite you sir and this is over to you thank you very much hope you can hear me so as uh, initially mentioned now uh, today's topic is on uh, spss so spss stands for social uh, statistical software social package uh, so um, we will uh, look into the different aspects of the spss which may be very much useful for you so what we'll do is uh, now first we have to uh, think that this is uh, kind of a practical this is not a completed uh, lecture so because of that uh, we need to have uh, to interact little bit uh, further even the uh, the audience is not just interact but i have to interact myself with the computer and uh, show you different applications and different uh, techniques of doing it uh so uh, during this two hours actually we will not be able to cover everything of the spss but i went through the uh, questions and understood that the most of the our audience uh, needs to they have the basic uh, uh, information related to the spss and how it's going to use but at the same time uh, there are about 10% of the audience like the participants Uh, needs to have a kind of a advanced analysis of the spss so it is really good to go uh, for the advanced analysis of the spss but definitely we need to have a, a, some kind of a basic uh, idea general idea about the spss then only we will be able to uh, build upon uh, other uh, techniques uh, that is say, available in the spss now uh, the other hand spss is not the only software which is available for data analysis so data analysis uh, would have uh, used uh, different other softwares as well uh, which are with us now starting from the excel excel per se having a uh, very good capability of uh, doing the analysis then uh, spss is much familiar to us because uh, uh, during the uh, using of the spss so we need to not to have kind of very advanced statistical knowledge of handling it and we will not be able to uh, we will able to use it without uh, much uh, knowledge in kind of uh, information technology that is the uh, beauty of having the spss for uh, using for our work and also there is a uh, uh, open source version of also over the spss which is available in the internet uh, so that is uh, Uh, free software uh, that we will able to uh, download and it's open source so we will not be able to not necessary to have the uh, um, subscription fee whereas uh, spss uh, is a license software which gives a free uh, trial time and after that we need to uh, purchase it that is the uh, the legal background of it i am explaining now uh, other than the spss there are other uh, softwares as well uh, such as r software which is again open source uh, and used for uh, advanced statistical analysis most of the time like modeling and uh, that kind of activities and also sas uh, stata another uh, two different uh, type of softwares which are mostly used but there are many other uh, spss so softwares as well in the net or able to download uh, and used by yourself in the computer but anyway in the sri lankan context it's uh, quite uh, familiar and quite popular the use of spss 
So, uh, because as I said earlier, it's kind of very easy to learn as compared to the many other uh, softwares. And also there is a very high capacity of the SPSS software, which will be able to do different kind of analysis as we need. So uh, that is the uh, background. Uh, so we will uh, start uh, little by little. Before that, let me share my screen first. Right. Uh, now, uh, what we are going to cover today is, uh, these are the topics. What I have highlighted here is, I am not focused much onto these aspects. Probably you would have already done those things, or it needs a little bit of uh, IT knowledge uh, with uh, somebody uh, having a background of IT uh, would help you to uh, get it uh, installed the software. So introduction, of course, uh, not into depth, but uh, I already, uh, Give a little bit of introduction and importation of the data set. So uh, now it's like this. Now uh, we enter the data in uh, different formats, like uh, maybe in the Excel, maybe in the <coughs> AP data uh, data format or the access or different kind. And finally, we need to import the data into the SPSS. So that is uh, uh, one thing we could do. And sometimes I have seen uh, some uh, uh, of the uh, uh, the kind of those who are involved in the research, they directly enter to the SPSS software as well. But however, SPSS is, uh, software is not meant for data entering purpose. Originally, it is for the uh, data analysis purpose. So uh, for the data entry, there are certain other uh, softwares as well, which we are uh, able to use now as example, if data, if info, are uh, two different uh, softwares, which we'll able to use uh, a data entry purpose as well or sometimes uh, uh, through the excel access uh, that kind of uh, applications also data entering is happening and also there is a new movement in the uh, research arena that is uh, data entry is directly with the link uh, link with the data kind of uh, questioning administration that means uh, while we are administering the questionnaire, we directly enter to the electron of devices, the data, then uh, no need of entering again the data to again uh, to the electronic database. So once uh, it's entered, then it's already stored in a electronic database, then it's a matter of exporting into the SPSS. So uh, that is how it uh, works. Uh, now, anyway, so we will uh, discuss these uh, topics one by one, but uh, most important thing is now I am going very slowly because my intention is to make familiar with the person uh, to SPSS from the scratch. So somebody who is having the uh, having some kind of a knowledge, uh, it's good uh, that he will able to follow the uh, uh, training and the lecture. That may be quite easy for them, but I have to look after uh, those who are not familiar with the SPSS also. So I will uh, uh, kind of. Uh, take you through very slowly, then you will be able to uh, follow the uh, tips and the concerns uh, that we have to uh, discuss here. Right, now, uh, uh, now uh, let me just orientate you with this uh, small diagram. Now, uh, question here we have already uh, administered. Uh, data entry has done. That is how we are getting familiar with SPSS. Now we have developed a database and then we have to do data analysis. For data analysis purpose, we need to uh, have a uh, analytical software. That is our uh, statistical package for social sciences or SPSS. Now, uh, this component I am not going to uh, discuss today because uh, I am expecting, because this is a very uh, narrow area of research methodology, I am trying to elaborate. So we will uh, talk more about the data analysis using the SPSS software. Now, uh, for that purpose, I will uh, share with you uh, the database I have already uh, shared with you. Mind you, if you uh, look at this, my presentation with the 
small screen like uh, like a small tap or the, uh, the mobile device so it may be a little difficult due to visualize all the aspects of the uh, the screen because uh, these are kind of small fonts uh, but if it is uh, if you are front of a computer i'm sure that you will be able to see the things uh, uh, more uh, accurately but anyway that may be there may be little difficulty because the uh, the font sizes are quite uh, small because we are uh, kind of uh, having a lot of uh, data here a lot of information here in one screen now this is the uh, database that you ha I have uh, shared with you now uh, first thing you need to know once you get a database first you have to scroll it down and see how many data rows are there that means uh, number of cases are here now here uh, we have how many data points it's we have 3151 rows that means we have 301 uh, 3151 uh, data points here so that means that particular question you have administered to uh, 3000 plus uh, participants so once you get the data set you need to know uh, the these small things like uh, you need to get familiar with the database if don't jump and do the data analysis that one maybe it's your own research but still once you get the database just get familiar with it otherwise uh, you uh, don't know what is going to analyze and uh, what is the uh, the variables available what are the variables available with the data set so so i know now uh, now we have uh, 3151 records here and also other important thing is now that we have uh, two i'm not sure whether you label this now we have two views here now data view variable view data view variable view. once you go to the variable view you could be able to see the variable name that you have uh, given for the uh, that particular uh, question of variable now and also there are certain other characteristics which explain about the variable we will discuss those as well as it goes uh, now first what we have to see is now there are uh, kind of 21 variables in this uh, database now how we have developed this database giving you a, a background now uh, i'll share you with the already i shared the question you know this is a sample question actually this is a very lengthy question here which i did a uh, kind of uh, survey which i am the principal investor for the island-wide survey that is how this data is coming uh, and also i did some alterations of the database as well as variable names because it's uh, unethical me to share, share the database uh, uh, as it is but for the learning purpose i have uh, already done some alterations of the uh, some of the variable names and also the uh, data points uh, to make it to uh, more easy for the your learning purpose and uh, it is not for the research or the findings presenting purpose but uh, uh, understanding the techniques of the spaces how it's going to use so this is the uh, question here which is uh, uh, used to develop the database now if you see this sample question here then we need to familiar with the question here what we administer that is also important now now uh, see we have not put any uh, forward steps to data analysis just we are trying to understand the database that is quite important please uh, spend some some time with just to understand the database if otherwise it will be really difficult as you go in the analysis if you stop this analysis in one point and after if you open it again the computer after two, a couple of days you have forgotten everything and it's very difficult to uh, analyze further as well because uh, you are not familiar with your own database so uh, now here we have the sample question here 
Now, uh, there are a few questions here. Now, don't think uh, and uh, the pros and cons of the January question. So, I have already changed the question. So, to make it to the purpose of uh, uh, learning the data analysis, not the, uh, the, the entire uh, scientific view of the question and the uh, scientific content, what it uh, retained there. So that is uh, what is not the important for us. What is important for us is uh, variable names and the, how it's the questionnaire, how it appears and how it's in the uh, database. Now, let's look at these things. Now, uh, there is a number of the uh, questionnaires. So, and also, uh, according to the number, I have labeled here uh, each and every variable. Now, that means in this variable view, that is very important us to understand. Now, name of the variable, we uh, keep it short. It's just uh, just one or two words that just to get the meaning of the variable. But if you need to have a quite a good description about the variable, it that has to be uh, written under the label context. The, this label, uh, label uh, column is for that. Now, when it sector uh, uh, as example, now it's clearly say the sector variable. Uh, what is uh, what is there is one point one. One point one is here sector of residence. Sector of residence. So I can uh, write here under the labels the entire thing that I want. So uh, so what is important is now otherwise now this is anyway a small database but in a, your question here this may be hundred different variables which we we'll, uh, listed like here in that case once you look at this the uh, variables name you will not be able to understand everything what is uh, what is in that particular variable now as example now uh, uh, there are, if there are a lot of uh, uh, variables now let's get knowledge touch. Just looking at knowledge touch, you will not get the real idea which question that it is refers to. That is why in the label section, it is important us to explain clearly what this particular variable is explaining to us. Now here, I have directly uh, mentioned uh, knowledge touch means this particular question 3.2.a uh, that is here 3.2.a avoiding frequent touching of mouth nose and eyes will reduce the risk of uh, risk of infection that is the uh, question or the uh, that have asked in the question here and that is the uh, data which is available in this uh, variable now uh, i think uh, you would have understand now there are few things in the database uh, again i'm briefing now one is the variable name and I will explain these things later. And another one is label name. So variable name is the shorter version that just to explain the uh, variable in one or two words. But if, if it is necessary to have a good idea about that particular variable, then under the label, we need to write it down. Sometimes, uh, because it's very hard, sometimes we are not just putting the label name just put in the uh, variable name you will understand what i'm saying when you are doing your analysis because uh, we sometimes lazy to put labels name but one or two days later when you open again the database if there is no label name i'm pretty much guaranteed now uh, sometimes you will not remember the what's the variable uh, mean for so that is why us to uh, have the uh, variable uh, name right now another important uh, column here is type type means so in the data we have uh, different types now i will uh, I think I already shared, if it is not, I will share that there is a, a small video which just 70 minutes in our college website uh, explaining about the different type of uh, data and based on the data only we will be able to use the uh, statistical methods that we want. 
So one important thing is uh, here in the SPSS is just uh, divide into whether it's a numeric data or a string data. String data means like uh, now it's here, it shows the, uh, the different type of uh, variable types that is uh, uptaken by the uh, SPSS. Now either it's a numeric or a number or it is a string or there are other type of data as well which uh, uh, will be taken into the SPS. But basically what is important for us is it's whether uh, we are able to understand the data type more as a numeric or the stream. So based on that, then we will be able to do the analysis. And if it is a stream, very important, some of the analysis we will not be able to, uh, uh, to do. Now, as example, if we have to calculate one by one, if it is in a numerical, as uh, I'll show you with the, the now, now it's like this. If you write like this one plus one, the equal to two. So that calculation can be done with the SPSS. If it in a one row uh, number in another uh, sorry in one column numbers and another column numbers we will do it practically then we will we'll realize then we will be able to calculate it but if the uh, the column is having like in a string version like one. So in such a uh, format, we will not be able to calculate the, uh, the different columns together, or we will not be able to uh, do uh, certain calculations based on the, uh, the string version. So because of that, it is quite important to have it in a, uh, uh, the numeric format. So that is also very important, I have seen Sometimes uh, when we are entering the data, we just enter into the system as uh, if, as example, if we say yes, no question, uh, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, in the letters, Y, E, yes, yes, in O, oh, no, likewise, we are entering. Now, it will be able to show the frequencies, the proportion or the percentages out of that particular variable, but for use that for some other variables or the association and so on, we need to definitely uh, put it in a numeric format. So that is the uh, importance of having this uh, numeric format. Again, I will uh, share this. Now here, here in the question here, now uh, what we need to enter, I, I uh, deliberately uh, do that because uh, we need to learn these things. Now, in the question here, the data have entered as urban rural estate. We'll go to the data view. See here, data is here, urban rural rural likewise. That is why it is a string type. But this should have entered in a numerical format like one urban, two rural, three estate. In that case, so into the uh, question entering, rather than uh, entering the word, we are entering one, two, three, four, like in numeric numbers. If we have done it, we will be able to do the analysis, uh, kind of calculations and uh, amalgamation of the data without any problem because it's in the uh, numeric form. But if it is in a string format, it is it will not possible us to do. So uh, one important point here that we have to remember is when we are entering to the data set, it should be always in a numeric format, not in the words and uh, like a string format. So if it is so, if uh, the word uh, uh, the 
data is entered already like this, please uh, convert it to uh, uh, numeric format. I will show you uh, how it's doing. That is why I wanted to keep one uh, variable in this data set as a string in a string format. So uh, all the other are in a numeric format. So I will uh, convert this into the numeric format and show you how it's going to do. Now, all the other variables, then we have uh, numbers on the numeric number. Now, now let, let's have example as a explained. It. So it's a number, it's come there. Now, uh, if you get this, this particular question, which of the following best describe how COVID-19 spread? It has uh, that particular question uh, is having uh, several uh, sub statements and each statement is asking from the uh, respondents whether you don't know, no, or yes. Then we give a value for that. That can be done. So rather uh, putting a numeric value, if I put the string value like don't know, no, yes, likewise, then if we are going to uh, amalgamate several uh, variables together, now as example, now I'm going to show you how we uh, develop a knowledge score here. So we will not be able to develop a knowledge score if the data is in a string format. So I'm telling these things because uh, with my experience of uh, handling uh, with uh, different other colleagues, these are the salient questions and the problems that they have faced in the data analysis. Not that uh, familiar with the SPSS and uh, doing the data analysis, just a matter of just uh, uh, clicking jump uh, the buttons, that's it. But uh, data set should be uh, in a fine format and be ready for the data analysis. So, and also uh, when we are helping to someone for the data analysis, data analysis, uh, the core part is very simple. It's, uh, it's a matter of just spending five or 10 minutes, we'll be able to do the analysis. But we spend a lot of time to, uh, time to uh, kind of uh, uh, streamline the data set. So the streamlining is now this is here, it is one example. If it is in a string format, then uh, then it's difficult to do. I will, as it goes, I will show you separate other uh, points as well. Now again, we will go to the variable view in the data set. Uh, we will, uh, we will remove it, this, the other uh, one, because we want to uh, make it uh, larger here, then uh, everybody will see it much clearly. Now, uh, in the uh, variable view, then we have the variable name, uh, the type already discussed, and the width. Width is uh, important, especially when it is a stream. If it is a shorter uh, width, then entire uh, statement will not be appear because with this number of uh, characters, uh, the system is going to take. Or it is even in the numeric, so, the width is quite important if it is a large number. Like, uh, let's say that in the expenses that we are going to mention it as 100,000. If the width is just uh, uh, two or three, then it will not able to uh, mention that particular 100,000. In the 100,000, then we have five digits, five digits. So 100,000 is a five digit number. If we just uh, uh, keep the width of that particular uh, column to two or three, then it will maximally show 100 though. Uh, if it is three, it's 100. If it is four, uh, 1,000. Because in 1,000, we have uh, four digits together. Now, uh, decimals. Decimals is again important in a uh, value if there is a decimal numbers also uh, there. So we have to uh, clearly mention how many decimals that we are going to mention. Yeah, so uh, we will able to uh, change it as well here. Now, as example, now uh, if we are measuring kilograms and the grams, now uh, let's say that we are getting in a research uh, the weight of the babies. So weight of the babies we have to mention as uh, uh, three point one kilogram, three point one five kilograms, likewise. So there is a decimal. If it is a three point one five kilograms. Uh, then uh, that means uh, three kilograms and 150 grams. Then we have two decimal points at least. That is 3.15. In that case, 
uh, it's necessary to have two decimal points. If this uh, be in a column, if we are mentioning about the weight of the babies, then we need to have at least two decimal points because up to the two decimal uh, numbers that we are going to uh, give the uh, weight. If we are not mentioning here the decimal numbers, what happens is uh, the number will truncate to uh, just to remove the decimal uh, numbers. Now, if we are going to get the 3.15 kilograms here, the database will appear only 3 kilograms. The next one will be uh, the one, uh, the closest, like uh, if it is the 4.5, it will show as a 4, likewise. So if we keep like that, then again, there is a problem because now let's say as a, again, you will get the, uh, the birth date example. Now our low birth rate according to WHO categorization, if the baby is less than 2.5 kilograms, we will get as a low birth rate. So if we are not selecting here as the decimal points, then we will uh, not be able to do that particular analysis in this database because the, the after the, uh, uh, the, the point, that means uh, 2.5, if it's the birth rate is 2.5, this 5.5 part has truncated already. Then we will not be able to calculate that particular uh, the analysis. So that is why these decibel points are important. Now label already I discussed and the values. Values again, very, very important. I'll show you as it goes with the analysis. Now, now values means now we already entered as one, two, three, uh, like us. Now, as example here, uh, in this uh, question here, we uh, mentioned, uh, I said that we need to mention it as a, uh, better to mention the other one, two, three for the, uh, the sectors. In that case, uh, in that case, the database will understand it is one, two, and three. So when we are doing the analysis also, it gives how many percentage for one, how many percentage to, for two, how many percentage for three, and so on. So what is important us to know is now what means by one, what mean by two, what mean by three. So we have to mention it. If we mention it in the analysis, it's automatically taken the, 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 the information that we have given. So where we give the information is under this values uh, section. Now, uh, now in the, the sector question, let's say that we are putting the numbers here. there. Now we have to mention it where values. So when you click here, we will able to uh, get another box. So value one, we have to give what we mean by the value map. It's the urban. Like then we need to add. So value two, what we mean by the uh, value two. So we add. Likewise, we able to add the estate tax. Well. Then what happens is once we do the analysis, the database automatically get this information and it uh, presented it as a. Uh, uh, urban this much percentage and rural this much percentage and so on. So it's very much easy to ask uh, rather than getting the numbers, then if we have this, uh, uh, the responses name here. So because of that, we need to uh, put these values as well. So it is quite important. Now see, uh, we uh, now few minutes, now already uh, it has 9.45. All the time we just describe the database, how it's uh, how is the nature of the database. Now, because this is quite important. This is the place where many of us are uh, going wrong and getting stuck with the different analysis because the analysis component is not that difficult, but you need to understand these small, small points practically and correctly. It is quite important in the analysis. Now missing. Missing component again, now uh, it's like this. Now when we are uh, getting the data, some questions would have missed already. Some uh, questions uh, that the respondent is not uh, responding to the date, uh, the information. In that case, that the, when we are entering the data, that particular uh, the cages, uh, data is missing for that particular case. In that case, we will 
able to give a special number for missing values. Like uh, we can put uh, as example, uh, most of the demographic and health uh, surveys uh, or the department census and statistics use the 99 as the missing value. So we will be able to give a particular value 99 for the missing value within once when we are doing the data entry, if the data entry operator came across a missing value in a questionnaire, rather than he just uh, it is keep uh, blank, he will able to enter 99. Then the database will identify the 99 means the missing value. So how they will understand this concept is now we have to enter here the uh, number which uh, uh, referring to the missing value. If that's the case, when the data analysis is happening, uh, so all this database is saying, okay, this much of variables are missing. If we keep it blank, then uh, the investigator also don't know uh, what's, why this was missed. It may be due to the, 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 that the data entry operator has missed the thing. We really don't know. So that is why that particular uh, column is important for us. And also there are other, uh, other uh, columns, these are not much important for us. Uh, uh, I said about the width already. And uh, now the alignment, alignment is always in the left if there is a numeric value and the string value is right, or, or we can even change if it is uh, necessary. And the measure, the, the scale, as we know, uh, the, there are uh, different data types like uh, nominal scale, ordinal scale, and so on, different scales. So based on the scales also, sometimes the, uh, the analysis method would be uh, changed. That is why I wanted you to uh, see that video. Video will explain you. Uh, I will share, I, I think uh, I already shared uh, with Dr. Dinesh the, the link. I also else you will be able to log into the College of Communication website. It's hosted in there and the, uh, the the data types and uh, how its data types are uh, kind of behave and how we have to select uh, occurred the test according to the uh, data uh, type so that's it about the data uh, base now we'll go into the analysis and before the analysis let me further uh, describe a little bit more about the uh, spss as well now uh, here we have different icons so be familiar with these icons. Now, I'm not going to explain all the icons today because it's uh, too much. And also, I'm not also familiar with some of the icons here genuinely because uh, as the versions comes, new icons would appear and new options are uh, coming up. That is why the version is changing. Now with this PSS version 28, but uh, uh, maybe you are using an older version as well, but it's no matter basic analysis we will be able to do with whatever the version, maybe like uh, uh, version 15 onwards, most of the analysis what is expected to uh, expected to, uh, for us to do, uh, we'll be able to do, but maybe certain uh, new options have added as the version number is changing, but uh, for, for our purview, most of the time, uh, those are not very much important. Right, now let's uh, understand a little bit more about the database. Now, in the database, you have here the, the file. I'm not sure whether you will be able to see it, yes. So when you click the file uh, menu, you will have this uh, box. In this box, again, it says import data. So if you need to import the data from the whatever the format, it's a matter of here to click whatever the relevant uh, uh, database, then it will navigate to the place where we have stored. So somebody was asking the question, he needs to know how to import the data as well. Now this is the way, go to the, uh, the file, import the data, in the import the data, then again, we have different, uh, uh, formats that we will be able to accept by the SPSS or else uh, if we have a database already developed in the SPSS then that will also be able to take. Now once you import the data from the Excel then again you have to get the precautions whether this uh, 
data is in a uh, correct format then uh, whether the the variables name is correctly appear in the excel sheet those has to those things has to be concerned otherwise if you just import and start analysis your time is wasting because uh, the the certain variables not, maybe not in a very good format so because of that those uh, once you import the data then again you have to uh, carefully see the database whether the uh, original the, the developer spaces database is similar to the original excel uh, sheet or whatever the database that you have developed now uh, that's there then uh, next important thing is when you have the variables here if you want to do the ascending or descending like here now as example in the serial number if you uh, able to see it now serial numbers are uh, one, first is uh, uh, 680 next one is 5 5308 likewise it's it's haphazardly here now uh, one thing you could do is you can go to the uh, uh, the tab here and right click and make it ascending and descending order you will be able to do that once you do the ascending then uh, the serial numbers are makes it an array as the numbers are appear in this database now see now earlier uh, something else now it is one two three four five six seven eight like that you will be able to do that kind of a, uh, changes as well the important thing here is if you wanted to see a missing value at once once you enter the data because data entry would have done by some other data entry operator maybe uh, uh, the, the, just a person who is just having the after the O level if maybe we are just recruiting him to enter in the data so he would have missed himself some of the entering of the data in that case you will be able to uh, see it from the database because if once you do the ascending start from the most lowest if it is uh, now here all the data is entered but anyway if the data is not entered here then it will appear here as a blank cell then we know okay this value has not entered if it is 99 then we know it's a missing value originally from the questionnaire but if it is blank, we really don't know whether it's a problem of the uh, uh, question your data entry operator that is why in the missing values it is important to mention as uh, uh, some uh, the particular number like uh, 99 right so now uh, likewise any any of the uh, the variables we will able to do that another thing happens very commonly happens is now we have given this data entry for something just assume that we have given data entry for someone else even even uh, sometimes uh, the investigator uh, do it there is a chance that the record would enter twice how to identify that now let's say now today i am uh, doing the data entry myself so now uh, just assume that i'll do it uh, up to the 10 of the 10th question here and suddenly i have to go out for something else then uh, i'll come back uh, today i didn't have time and the tomorrow i again enter in the data so start entering the data i really don't know i really don't know whether i have entered the uh, the which number i have entered the last like 10 or 11 or 9 in that case i enter the date 10 uh, question here again in that case database is having two uh, two responses from the 10th question so what to uh, do there then we have to identify it so anyway uh, the unique number in the database of uh, throughout is our serial number that we have used that is why in a questionnaire when we are entering questionnaire the serial number is very essential to enter now uh, sometimes i came across some of the databases there is no serial number have entered in that case if we uh, uh, not able to do most of the analysis then cross checks the things now as example if there's a duplicate we will not able to identify it and also sometimes uh, uh, if there's a missing value if, even if i want to enter the missing value again from the original question here i will not have the way of doing it because it's not possible to link 
the uh, database and the questionnaire and identify the relevant questionnaire for data entry purpose because of that uh, those things are quite important us to know and uh, now what i am going to uh, say is now how the serial number is checked whether it is duplicated or not so the, all these things have to do before starting our data uh, analysis so these are kind of preliminary analysis to get familiar with the database now go to the uh, go to the data uh, data tab here yeah, i am looking at whether you, you yes you will able to in the data there is a data menu here under that there are so much of uh, options out of them select identify duplicate cases identify duplicate cases so once you do that you will get a box like this identify duplicate cases so how are you going to identify is whether we are looking in whether serial number is duplicated in the database that means if they are getting a, a number like 10 so whether we have entered twice the uh, 10th number then that will label us to see so i'll take uh, taking the serial number here so see the the variables i am checking is serial number so there are other options also we are not uh, going to those things right now but going to the uh, defined matching cases by serial number and click ok so then you will uh, have this uh, uh, box again it says that there are 3151 uh, data records here as i uh, mentioned earlier now missing values yes and primary cases again 3151 that means all are uh, fresh cases there are no replication uh, there is no like as example i said there is no uh, like uh, questionnaires number 10 has entered twice all are primary so it is not like that if we if we have entered a questionnaire uh, uh, twice then it will appear here as a uh, secondary numbers then again we have to see what we have replicated here hope uh, it is understood okay now with this knowledge let me uh, make it a little bit uh, smaller again because this output uh, box is again important for us so it is the one showing all the things that we uh, do Now I have the uh, database here in one side and uh, other side uh, the output uh, uh, table. Now first what I am going to do is uh, calculate the percentage of uh, each uh, that is our first question. Now. So looking at this question here now I am going to uh, analyze and see how much of percentages are in this each uh, each uh, each sector why well, i am uh, time to time just interrupting it because i am getting so much of calls from the uh, field i am uh, texting out that to call in a one hour time that is why i am time to time getting interrupted anyway now uh, we have uh, three sectors here to enter now what i am going to do is entire database all these 3000 plus households i am going to divide or the look into the frequencies or the numbers in each sector let's do that as early i said now this particular uh, variable the column has entered in a string format can we do the analysis yes we can do just the frequency or just looking at the proportion. If we want to do further things, then we need to 
uh, convert into the uh, numeric format. First, uh, as it is there, we will do a frequency run. How to do? Go to this analysis uh, menu. Analysis menu. Here, all kind of analysis are available there. Now, all important analysis, correlation, regression, log linear, there are so much of here. But at the minimum stage or the beginning stage of yours, what is important for us is this descriptive analysis uh, menu. With this, most of the things that we are able to do are quite adequate for most of our uh, research work. But if we need to kind of uh, modeling, multivariate analysis and so on, then we have to go to some other options available in this menu. So what I'm going to do here is now looking into the, uh, the frequencies of uh, different sectors according to this database. So click frequencies. Once you do that, you will get this box uh, with the uh, labels name. Uh, and you need to identify which variable that you need to have. In that case, now this is the nice thing. Now see, since I have uh, explained all labels very correctly, like question here, yeah, now it is very much easy for me to identify the variables and uh, pick it up, what is necessary for us. If I ha don't have this kind of uh, uh, arrangement, like question here, yeah, it is quite difficult uh, to identify the correct variable that I need. Now, uh, sector is the one I needed here. So select the sector of residence and click this arrow. Then it will go here. Now we have here uh, certain other uh, important uh, buttons as well. So th these also give different kind of options for us. Uh, gives us statistics, so, so the, uh, it calculates the mean, median, mode, and so on, the quantiles and so on so select the correct and uh, the correct uh, options that we need so that is why we need to have a, some kind of a statistical knowledge before doing the uh, statistical analysis with spss now here then we should know as example we should know what is mean well, we should know what is median if we don't know what is what is meant by mean so we will not be able to identify correctly now, what happens with the SPSS is whatever we select out of these things, it will give a value for us. But if we select the uh, different option without a sense of a statistical knowledge, then the given value is also have no sense. So it's simple as that. So that is why we need to have some kind of a background knowledge about the statistics. It doesn't mean that you need to have very sound uh, statistical knowledge before handling SPSS. That like uh, we are uh, facing a statistical exam paper, it's not necessary, but uh, we need to know what these statistics are, what they are mean for, and at what point that particular statistics that we need to uh, the select. Now, as example here, if we see uh, uh, this mean, if I select the mean here, it has no sense in this particular analysis because it's different uh, sectors. I am looking into uh, three different sectors. So mean it doesn't have any uh, kind of a meaningful uh, uh, the analysis here. So that is why it is important you to uh, understand what is the uh, the sense of different kind of uh, uh, the data sets that we are having that is the that is the important point i am not criticizing anybody but if we are just outsourcing for the data analysis for some statistician uh, who is not having a medical knowledge or medical background sometimes he will use different variables what the uh, other statistical norms what he think it is important for him in that case it is it doesn't mean anything for our research report because that the particular analysis has done with the uh, whatever he thinks he is important for us, but it is not the important component to the, uh, the medical uh, statistics. Right. 
so i am not going to select anyone here then then make continue there are other charts formats and so on there are other aspects as well so you will able to see it later then uh, click okay once you do that then it nicely give for us that the what the percentages are estate rural urban now the names are appearing here directly because we used it as a string uh, frequency run or the string uh, variables were there then we analyze directly so as i said earlier if it is uh, some kind of a calculation or cross tabulation that we are uh, going to do so uh, this uh, particular uh, variable would have limitation of doing it so the frequency is there that is number and the percentage is there so so here also we give the get the cumulative percent so but cumulative percent is not relevant here for us but certain analysis it may be important and so that you have to think with your sense so once you get this uh, table then you need to uh, kind of modify according to your need in my case i if i think here then what i'll do is uh, one thing you can do is you can just copy this table and take into uh, let's open up word document again so i uh, copy and paste here or else uh, if i paste like this then uh, all right actually i have uh, done some uh, alterations for the computer itself that is why it's come just uh, without uh, without uh, table format per se uh, because for my uh, my report writing purpose otherwise it will come as is a table or then you will be able to do some alteration or else before uh, doing uh, just going to the, the, this uh, word format or else you will be able to go into the uh, excel sheet as well now i'll i already paste it in excel sheet i'll show you just now i paste it uh, right here now the, so this is the table if i paste copy and paste it again here right it's here now what we need to do is uh, so we have to change our topic accordingly because uh, if it is a postgraduate thesis or uh, uh, the journal publication then we have to write it uh, the a table name in a kind of sensible way and according to the format what is given by the particular agency so then uh, the state rural urban is there then frequency the percentage but these two uh, columns are not necessary me so it's remove it we will remove it, the first one as well make it little larger so percentage then i'll put uh, percent number we put sector here so so this is the uh, important table for me so i label to get it copied and and uh, put it to here so uh, i label to i'll change my settings here now uh, the the table is here now uh, table of course you will able to make it large as you want let's say uh, that i want to to uh, have the auto fit to the window like this now we delete this now uh, usually in the uh, right side then now the sector is there uh, the percentage is some mentioning here now usually in uh, the if it is a 
postgraduate thesis, we are not putting the table like this, but uh, we need to, uh, to remove certain uh, the, this uh, table formats or the lines. So what we need to do is just uh, click no borders, the borders are gone. Then uh, in the sector, be able to uh, put the borders like this, top border, and if the total, Like this. So, so now the table is so now sector. If you want it, you can bold. So we will be able to give a uh, name here, yeah, table one. Sector of the population, or the, we can say the population distribution according to the sector, whatever that we will be able to write. So that uh, component is important. Now, uh, another important thing is sometimes in the, some reports, I don't want to mention exactly the place, but in some reports, when we are uh, 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 putting it as a report, just uh, copy paste these, uh, the tables in, directly into the tables format, but it is not accepted. So we have to identify important variables and uh, put into the uh, table like this. Just don't uh, kind of uh, copy and paste directly the ta relevant uh, the table here. It is not accepted. So we need to develop a table like this. It's just uh, you have to do uh, uh, some one or two minute additional work, but it's very nice. Only the important uh, the numbers are there. Now, problem about the SPSS is it's not actually a problem, it's an advantage, but the, we have created our own problems. The thing is, uh, there are many variables, many data is presenting with the SPSS, like this here, valid missing data is there, then the cumulative percentage, values percentage, then the person who is writing the document or uh, writing down the report has to be correctly identify what is important for him. If we put everything into the our report, it is not accepted. Right. Now, I said that uh, I'll explain you how to uh, uh, change the string, string, uh, string variable into a Let me just uh, clean up the mess. Right. I already said to you that now here we have the string variable. We are converting it to a numeric variable. So I said uh, now here in the data entry, we have mistakenly entered the, all the names here, rural, urban, likewise, but we need to convert into uh, numbers, how we could do it. So it is important because I understand and I have experienced most of the time we do that error. Just we enter like this, uh, maybe yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, likewise, but uh, we are not uh, uh, just sticking into the numeric variables. In that case, again, we need to go into transform menu. In the transform we have two options here, record into same variable or record into different variables. What happens in the record into same variable is, so the, when we are doing the, now, now uh, giving a new name, it will just appear in the same variable uh, column that we are uh, working on. So if we are going to the record into different variable, while keeping this particular variable, Another new variable will appear in the database. So I'm I what what I'm recommending is go to the record into different variables because in the case in the process if we get uh, 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 wrong in some process then at least we have the original variable with us uh, to do it again. So that is why we need to go into record into different variables. 
So it is always recommended to do that. So we, let's kick pick it, record into different variable. Then we we'll get a uh, box like this. Now here, what we are going to uh, record set of residents. So we need to uh, identify this particular uh, variable. So what we are going to record is now we have three names here, rural, urban, estate, but we are going to give numeric numbers for that, new, new, numerical values for that. Now rural, uh, then we here we have to understand and uh, write it down preferably, uh, which number is rural, which number is urban, which number is estate. I always recommend when we are doing the analysis, keep a small notebook in a side. It is very important. So we will not be able to do everything with the computer because uh, certain things we may have to write it down in our notebook. It is much easier rather than opening a, a, a the word file and uh, type it. So keep a notebook always with you. So they are uh, put the relevant uh, uh, numbers or the notes whenever you are it's necessary because sometimes when we are doing this, we may have so many disturbances around us. Now, uh, people will talk to each other, or the kids will come into the room, and this kind of thing. So, we distract at once, then we'll get forget everything. Because of that, uh, especially these numbers uh, kind of thing, we have to uh, note it down, then we will not forget it. Now, uh, the numbers I'm going to give is now for the urban one. Rural to estate three. So, what I'm going to do is now we have the sector sectors here: rural, urban, and estate. So, for those uh, uh, string uh, variables, uh, the names are here. Now, I'm going to give uh, numeric numbers for that. So, what I'll do is now uh, sector of residents. I'll select that and take here. Now I am going to record into a different variable. That means I have to identify name for uh, that particular uh, variable. Then what I'm going to do is uh, whatever the name you label to give sector. I'll give sector number. So th that is the uh, my new variables name. Label here. Again, I label to give a name label here. Uh, so after that, when everything is finished, then I'm going to uh, delete the, uh, the original variable because of that, I'll give the same uh, label here. Of course, we label to give the same name here for the label, but when you are selecting the variables name, definitely we have to identify uh, the, the different one because the, in a database, then there is exactly same variables name, it will not appear uh, or uh, it will not appear and the database will reject it. So we have to do that. And also the important point here, now when we, when we give the variable name, it's a continuous numbers here. Now here I put underscore without when at the space, sector number, put the underscore. If I uh, write it down without this underscore and keep a space, then variable name will not uh, accept by the database. So because of that, it should be uh, same like this. Also certain uh, numbers like uh, hyphens and so on, it will, not, uh, uh, it will not be taken by the database. So uh, here I'll put the uh, label value as our question number again, uh, that is, uh, the, the sector, so I think uh, I don't have the question here. Sample question, it says the 1.1. Question number 1.1, I write here. Sector of residence, one urban to rural, three estate. So I'll, I'll put the name and numbers also here, the nine not for, I will not forget it. So, so I change it already. 
Now, here important stuff again. We have a, uh, the button here, old and new area values. That is the place that we need to give new values. Click that. Once you click it, then you will uh, see this uh, box again. Here, what we're going to do is uh, now we need to give the, uh, the previous uh, number or name here and the new uh, value here. Now, uh, we don't have a number here. Actually, uh, what we're going to do is now, what we are going to do is here, now we are going to enter a string uh, variable name here. R U R A L U. Now uh, remember here we have to type it exactly the same as what you have written in this uh, uh, the column. Otherwise, it will not identify. Actually, it is preferred uh, to just copy and paste here. Copy from the uh, the original database the name and paste here. If it is so, it will not. Uh, have any problem. So for the rural, what I'm going to do is do. If you do that, it is not enough. Then we have to click this add button. Then only the uh, database will take it as uh, the rural equal to. And also I'm going to uh, take another one here that is urban. Urban, urban, then urban is number one then other one is estate i hope this is the way it has written if it is not taken then i am going to directly copy it for the time being i'll do this then add here now uh, three uh, string names i have given three numeric values Continue. I have done that. Now everything is fine. Uh, then I click OK. Now let's see what is what has happened. Now see here sector number. New variable has appeared here. Sector number. So number is here. So the sector number, the, the variable we created, it's there. Now here, there's a decimal point appear, but it's not necessarily a decimal point, isn't it? So we will be able to remove it or make it uh, zero, no decimal points. So again, we'll go to the uh, sector. Then uh, sector number is appearing here without decimal numbers. Then again, I will do the uh, same analysis uh, as earlier. With the uh, new descriptive uh, frequencies instead of this we'll go to the uh, the other one which we created now uh, here we will able to use this uh, reset button once we uh, click this reset button again uh, this box will come up to the uh, the original level otherwise it will remember the previous uh, the variable that we were using so reset so this time we are going to select this uh, sector of residence. Go there and click OK. Now see here, one, two, three. So uh, instead of these names, now we have uh, the numbers here, one, uh, 580, that is urban, two, uh, that is uh, rural, three, uh, 90. So instead of uh, names, now it appears that uh, the numbers. So at once you might think, okay, a previous one is better. So it's we have the names as well. But uh, mind you, if we keep it like this for the further analysis, this will be really difficult to do. So like uh, statistical associations of different kind, it will be uh, difficult to do. So that is why I uh, recommend you to come into this uh, numeric numbers. Now, uh, again, important thing is there. Now I have documented already what is one, what is two, what is three with me. But anyway, 
after sometimes uh, maybe you cannot remember without looking into your original notes this what is one what is two and what is three so it's better to label now what is one what is two what is three so in that case what we need to do is we okay we'll go to the variable view this sector number variable is the one we were working on here the values are there now i said earlier here we will able to give again what is uh, uh, the, the information given by number one number one is urban sorry number one urban at number two total and always uh, click the add button if you forgotten to click add button that means that you have not uh, finished the this uh, algorithm or this you have not finished this work number three state right now it's there click okay now uh, the this information is also incorporated there now it again we'll go to the analysis and see and do the same analysis and see whether they, these numbers are now mentioning as the uh, the, lab, uh, the names click okay and state we have already selected it earlier so i'll use the same and click okay now see now numbers are uh, sorry uh, labels uh, the, the 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 responses appear here urban rural estate instead of one two three so uh, it's uh, easy to remind the uh, things right so what is next Now, uh, the second question in the uh, in our the, the question list, I'll skip because uh, the what I want to teach you is already I taught with the, the first question. Uh, now, next one is the calculate the average and median number of members in a household. That is the question. Uh, I think I have already shared the uh, question set that I want you to uh, respond with this. I uh, strongly recommend you to do this analysis again after mine and uh, go uh, and answer to the, these questions again with the same database. Then you will get familiar with that. After that, you will be able to work with your own database uh, with uh, considering the points I have elaborated. Now, <clears throat> the next question is average. Uh, and median number of members in the household. Let's see how uh, the question we have asked there. Sorry, not this one. Right number of members in the household that is the, that was the question we have asked so the people have responded for that so the members uh, would have mentioned in uh, each uh, each household now another important point is, is now if you want to just uh, see the data of this particular variable go to this uh, in front of the variable name and double click once you do the double click, then it will directly go to the uh, relevant uh, database, uh, I mean, uh, data view and the relevant, uh, relevant variable members. So I'm going to get the average and the median of this uh, uh, mem number of members here. How to do that? Now, once you do this one or two analysis, then after that, you will be really interested and uh, will be able to. Uh, uh, do that as well because it's like uh, repetition of the work but you need to uh, have a very good database to do these things very smoothly that is why i spend uh, 
almost one hour to telling the tips about the database handling. Now again, we'll go to the descriptive statistics. Let's be the uh, instead of frequencies this time we'll go to the explore so explore means uh, it's explore everything about the data set so uh, all the information will be told uh, by the the spaces for us uh, about this particular uh, the uh, the members uh, column but maybe certain things are not necessary for us but as i said earlier spaces will tell everything for us but we need to have a sense to select what is important for us Okay, then uh, when I do this explore, then I'll get this box in the number of members in your household. That is the variable that is important for me. Uh, click it, it comes here, dependent list. The factor list, just uh, forget for the time being, it's uh, kind of uh, do some, the kind of uh, within the uh, explore within the uh, one particular variable that is not necessary for us for that time being. Uh, and uh, statistics, it says the, the statistics that I wanted to present for these uh, members in your household. So here actually, uh, I am interested about percentiles because now uh, number of members means this it's a categorical way, numbers, one, two, three, four, five, likewise. Now, uh, so there can't be 1.1 person in a household no 1.5 persons in a household that can't be there but when you get average yes it's possible because we uh, calculate uh, count every everything together and divide by the number of households there can be mean can be having a, uh, some uh, percentages but this is originally a categorical variable so and also, as we know now, we it's necessary uh, and it's better to mention it as a median as well. Now we know uh, uh, in the uh, uh, in the central tendency we present it as a mean, median, mode. Uh, oh, and we have to identify what is uh, what is uh, whenever appropriate is the mean, whenever appropriate is the mode, like uh, when we appropriate is the median, likewise, and also when you go to the uh, measures of dispersion and uh, that means that the dispersion the method we are when we are showing then we have to give the how this uh, database is dispersed around this particular uh, central tendency value we are taking that means in a simple terms when we take the mean when mean is the median uh, the average per point that we are presenting but we need to see how this database is uh, uh, spread over. That is why uh, we need to have another uh, indicator there. For so with the mean, what we present is uh, standard deviation. And with the median, what we present is with the percentile. So because of that, uh, I will select the percentile. Or so the percentile is the interquartile range. That is the, uh, uh, the name given in some statistics books. So uh, that is why I said that we need to have a, some kind of a statistical knowledge as well when we are doing the analysis, but it's not in the depth, uh, but we need to have a, some kind of a, uh, a sense over the uh, statistics. So make it continue. The plots I am not interested at this moment, that's the graphical part. So click OK. So, Although I, I, I'm not interested, it's appearing here because it has uh, uh, the deliberately uh, clicked in the, the plot section. Anyway, now uh, what is important for me is this uh, particular uh, table. So here it says the mean. That means 3.64 uh, people are in a particular household in this uh, study population. It's a mean value. So uh, the median is 4. Okay, that means the mean and median is not uh, exactly at the same place. So there's a kind of a uh, distortion also in the, uh, the data. And uh, when you go to the next one, it says the percentiles. That what is important for us is for the interquartile range, 25% to 75%. So 25 uh, percentile is number of three people are there. So uh, 75 50 percentile there are five people are there likewise then uh, when we are uh, 
how we are going to present this data by the way since uh, so number of members in the household so we will be able to prepare a small table here so we What is the mean? 3.64. So with the mean, what we are going to present is standard deviation. That is 1.4, we'll keep two digits, uh, two decimal points, 1.40. What is the median? So median uh, four. So, with the median, what we are going to present is uh, interquartile range. So, interquartile range is uh, we can uh, elaborate a little bit if you want. Uh, we write three, two, five. So, we label right here for the more clarity. 25th percentile to 75th percentile. Right, that is how it is presented. Now we have so much of tables here, but we need to identify what is important for us to present. So don't copy and paste the entire table here. There will be a lot of unnecessary data here. You are unnecessarily getting troubles for that. So that's it. Right. Okay. We'll go to the next question. Right. Okay. Now it's since uh, 1040. Uh, since I need to uh, finish it another 20 minutes. I skip uh, some of these questions. Uh, actually, uh, once you do these things, you will be able to do the rest also. Let me go to the uh, the knowledge questions. Now, now three point two. Which of the following best uh, following best describe how the COVID nineteen uh, spread? Don't know one, no two, years three. There are uh, three marks given for this uh, this uh, responses, and we have uh, several statements. The years means that uh, he is having a uh, correct knowledge, isn't it? Just look into this. The virus can also spread more in crowded indoor settings. If we know, know it, yes, that means he is get a higher mass. Don't know. Uh, one and no uh, two is given actually uh, these two we we'll able to combine also sometimes don't know means or oh, no means little confident okay it's not don't know is uh, he don't know it is either yes or no so that is why it was given uh, lower marks but with your relevant supervisor and having the team of expert you will be able to decide which numbers that we are going to give these uh, values so what we need to know is now here, now we are going to uh, do uh, uh, the knowledge score here. So what we're going to do is now uh, we have uh, three, four, five, six, seven uh, different statements and different uh, marks here. What we're going to do is collecting all these uh, statements, uh, the, uh, the, the marks given for each statement, we are going to calculate one particular score. So if uh, somebody have uh, correctly uh, 
uh, answer to the all uh, questions, then he will get the maximum marks because uh, uh, he will get uh, all three marks together. And also, if uh, somebody have not uh, uh, response correctly for almost or not almost all uh, questions, then he will get only uh, one here, one here, one here, one here, likewise. So together, uh, three, four, five, six, seven, seven uh, number of marks of seven. So if we have, uh, if the if person has respond to all questions correctly, then he will get mark of eighty. So because three, likewise here. Right. So what we need to do is first we have to calculate all these together. In other words. We have to calculate response of the, the A statement, B statement, C statement, D statement, E statement, F statement, and G statement together. Then only we will be able to calculate the score. That means uh, we have to calculate these numbers together. So we will do that. Okay, I'm looking to the responder, uh, response, response, the comments there. Yeah. Right, okay. Uh, we'll go again to this uh, table. Sorry, not this one. The data. Here. Now, this time, what we are going to use is compute variable. Compute variable. It's under the transform tab compute variable so here we need to give a name for the variable we will say knowledge score sorry so we have to put a underscore there and here so uh, type and label then ask the label what's the label is uh, we will say uh, calculation of no, knowledge of all questions so then i know what, what's this knowledge score uh, variable is meant for now what i'm going to do is now <coughs> uh, we have three point uh, 3.2 A to A, B, C, D, E, G, F. Right. All these, uh, let me a little bit uh, make it larger, then we will see it. Right. Now, these variables are there. Then I am going to uh, compute all these variables together. We will start from A, not to change anyone. So, variable 1 plus the variable B plus C plus C plus D plus E plus F. Sorry, I didn't put uh, be very careful, otherwise, we'll uh, miss. It. We have to put plus mark here. Right now, we calculate all the variables together and getting a knowledge score here. Now, everything is fine in the table. We can recheck. Now, uh, here again, I'll uh, explain you something else also. Now, we have several buttons here. use these buttons for any 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 kind of a calculation as well now as example if after we develop the knowledge score if we want to divide by two then uh, options are here to do that also so click ok now let's see whether we are getting that variable yes knowledge score is here we will uh, click and see again whether the knowledge score is there, yeah. Actually, it's straight, you are not dating, yeah, altogether. Uh, 
now uh, score is here knowledge score is here now uh, now important thing is once you get the knowledge score you need to know how it has dispersed now it's actually the knowledge is based on again the audience that we are having in the question and also the way of asking the questions and the depth of the questions if it is a very simple question then they will uh, marks very high and if it is very difficult question uh, then they marks uh, lower in because of that when we have the knowledge score the where we are divided to good knowledge bad knowledge or intermediate knowledge whatever it's not a uh, there is no the, the clear scientific way of doing it i mean just looking to the science, science uh, the statistics it's the personal judgment and the expert judgment that is why in that case uh, how we are going to divide these things has to be uh, come up with your own ideas with your knowledge about the subject and also if you have a supervisor in a research thesis then uh, the always with the concurrences of the supervisors if it is a teamwork then uh, uh, in the team everybody together and discuss and see uh, where we uh, should, should need to have cut off points and also looking into how the score is dispersed so first what we'll do is we'll see how this uh, knowledge is uh, dispersed so in that case we will uh, go to the analysis again and go to the uh, descriptive statistic and frequencies let's see we will remove the previous one knowledge score how it is okay now see very few people get the lower knowledge like uh, uh, only seven people out of the 3000 plus have informed that uh, reported that they are they don't know all the seven questions that we ask but uh, 2700 have correctly answered for the question that means uh, in this particular set of seven questions our population in this uh, studies population have pretty well uh, respond to the all uh, all questions but only a, a kind of a, a lower compound like the here it is 86 percent only the 14 percent have incorrectly uh, uh, answer at least for a, one question right so where we should uh, do the our deviation now uh, if we want to divide the group into two good knowledge and bad knowledge where uh, where we should do that now if you get the median like it's somewhere here then it's a very small percentage in the group bad knowledge and uh, very high proportion in the good knowledge component in that case we will not be able to do a good uh, analysis like if we are going to do the cross tabulation like uh, as example if we look into the income and how the knowledge is associated together then uh, uh, if the uh, knowledge is uh, in the knowledge variable uh, in the knowledge score in the good good knowledge one there's a large proportion then we our analysis will be not that sufficient that is because of that we will try to divide as far as maximum into a uh, uh, higher percentage into both categories so what we can do is here now I, as i said it's now it's a personal judgment with the, your team's expert expertise with the supervisor or the uh, other team members together now here in this case i am going to uh, do the categorization here if somebody have uh, responded all seven questions correctly i am taking it as a good knowledge and uh, if uh, somebody have responded at least the uh, uh, not, not responded correctly at least a one question then it i will take it as uh, the poor knowledge so though it is not poor like uh, all the six questions you would have uh, respond correctly but in this analysis i will uh, consider like that because that now this population is skewed toward, towards the uh, the higher knowledge so in that case i need to categorize into two uh, two groups here 
So how to do that? Again, this is a very common uh, kind of thing that we will get in our analysis. So what we'll do is we uh, record into another variable with two categories, good knowledge and poor knowledge. So the people who have responded all questions, that is who have scored 21, will take it as a good knowledge and all the other people will take it as a poor knowledge. So we will do that. So let me uh, let correct the databases again. Right. Right. Here again, what we need to go do is go to the transform uh, menu again. There we have record into different variables. We already used it earlier and use this in a different way. Record into different variables. Then we will uh, get this box. Right. Uh, reset first. So this is the uh, the variable that we interested about. So knowledge score. So we need to give a new name for the variable. We say uh, knowledge to cat. So so knowledge into into two categories. Right. So I gave the name. Now make a change. Right. We'll go to here. Here is the most important. Now, as we notice here, if somebody have get the twenty one, that means all the, uh, the all the questions are correctly answered. We'll label it as one. So now again, your notebook is important. You have to uh, uh, write it down. So the good knowledge. That is all questions uh, answered correctly. Good knowledge. I am giving the label uh, numerically one. So write it down in your uh, notebook. Otherwise, you will forget what is uh, one later. So all other values I'll put as two. That means uh, poor knowledge. Two. Poor knowledge too. Right. Let's continue. Click OK. Now let's see how it's here. Knowledge two categories. Here again, we have new uh, variable. Now directly we'll go to the uh, values here. We, as we know, so the one is one. We put as good knowledge and two as poor knowledge. At so uh, we label it as well. All the responses. Click OK, and uh, now again. Uh, once you do something, just check it and see whether things have happened in correct way. We go to the frequencies and see whether we have uh, done it correctly. Otherwise, uh, sometimes uh, we will not uh, see the errors as we will go to the last moment. So we put here knowledge into two categories, variable frequency will check. Now the things are here, it says, Poor knowledge 437, good knowledge 2,000, uh, what, 2,714. See, uh, now we, we level to check it. Then the score 21 was taken by 2,740. So 21 is the one we label it as good knowledge. So uh, the number is here correctly. All right, now it is correct. Now we have uh, uh, two categories here, good knowledge and poor knowledge, right. 
now we will see the last questions i wanted to analyze here you will be able to analyze the other one because uh, i i already mentioned the method let's see the questions again for us so we computed this one knowledge score divided based on the median score into two categories now actually the i look directly into the uh, uh, the uh, this uh, 21 is because it's large number then i'll take it as the 21 is the one group uh, but if you want you can see the median also in fact median is uh, uh, at the same place because this is a skewed, skewed population towards 21 now next one is as the knowledge categories and income categories using appropriate statistical test i am not going into that but i'll uh, show you with the next one then you will realize how to do that now uh, income categories here uh, i wanted to do um, that income into two uh, divide into two categories also and it's same way as we did for the uh, the knowledge score so once you do that we will able to uh, see the uh, statistical association uh, if it is two categories that means uh, categorical data in that case what we necessary to administer is a chi square test so that will explain in that particular video when you are looking at that you will be able to get understanding as well so uh, what we need to use is categorical uh, for the categorical data chi square test i'll show you how to do that i'm since the time is limited i'm not going into all the uh, steps as uh, necessary i am confident uh, with this previous knowledge that you will be able to uh, do that but in the last one it's asked uh, assess the association of mean income and the knowledge categories using an appropriate statistical test now when it's scale the mean income income was there uh, previously mentioning in one of the variables now what it task is now income divide the income and see whether there is a difference in the income occurred into the uh, knowledge categories so income is a continuous variable because income like uh, uh, 1000 1100 1200 like because it's continuous so knowledge we have categorized into two so what we are going to do is according to the knowledge categories that we are looking into whether the mean income is changed and it is whether it is the uh, significant uh, statistical so what is the test uh, that we are going to use here we need to compare two means which is which are continuous variables in that case uh, we need to use if it is two groups we need to use t test so i saw in the comments uh, someone is asking about the uh, compared in three groups as well so if it is three groups if it is continuous variable then we have to use anova test so anova also we have the same option here uh, you will be able to uh, search it and identify very correctly uh, because it's in the same time what i'm going to show you and uh, here we have an assumption that this population is normally distributed that means income is normally distributed since this is a large number we assume this as a normally distributed but origin uh, the ideal way of doing it if it is a small number of uh, population then we need to see uh, whether the population normally distributed or skewed or uh, skewed in that case there may be certain other tests that we will able to apply and see whether uh, this population is uh, skewed or normally distributed but since this is a large number we will be able to use directly uh, the t-test which is uh, uh, using for the uh, normal distributed uh, population but what it says is if the number of uh, number we are going to assess is it's more than 30 it's most of the time we will be able to use the t-test if the number is less than 30 only we need to use uh, uh, test which is uh, using for the uh, non-normal distribution which is known as non-parametric test so 
uh, if it is uh, uh, there may be relevant test uh, for the uh, t test and as well as ANOVA test in the uh, non parametric uh, version as well which is mentioned in this youtube uh, video as well and now as example if it is uh, ANOVA that we are going to use then it's non parametric uh, representative test is MANOVA Likewise, uh, if it is a T test, it's a Kushkal Walls test. Likewise, uh, there are things uh, uh, there, but uh, you don't want to worry about those things much, but just remember there is a point like this as well. With that, uh, let me uh, show you uh, how to do the T test here for this. Uh, Right, again, I'm back with the uh, database. This time in the analysis, I am using this one, compare means. Now I'm what, what I'm going to do is, I, I'm trying to compare the income level of two knowledge categories. So I'm going to uh, compare uh, two groups actually. Now we have two independent, uh, uh, samples. So I have to use independent sample t test like that. So the test variable is the income. So we have variable here. I didn't go into much detail about the, uh, the variables each and every, but uh, I'm sure you are familiar with the database because I sent it yesterday itself to just get idea. So total amount of income. So I labeled put there and grouping variable. Grouping variable is the knowledge score that I have uh, developed that is uh, divided into two groups. So that is there. And there are, we have to define the group as well. Now we have to do that step without that this OK button will not appear as to click. So define. So the numbers that I used have to mention here. So I used one and two, one, two. It's no matter whether I put two here and one here, but anyway, I have to use the same numbers that I used in the database for categorizing the uh, knowledge score. Continue. So now it's here, now we'll be able to click it. Click that. So, once I click it, I'll get this uh, uh, information again. Now, a uh, lot of information are there, as I uh, mentioned in the previous one. Now, what is important for us? Now, mean value is here. Standard deviation also here, it is also important. And the T value is here and the significance. Those are the important information that I have to take from this so much of information available with the output. So there I label to write, I label to develop uh, another table here. So the mean I will able to show. What is the mean? Good knowledge mean. Sorry, uh, the the income. Income mean fifty one thousand two hundred and seventy. Poor knowledge. Okay, me. Now, at the same time, I labor to write the standard deviation here. So the standard deviation is here.
I, I'll inform another important point here. So under that, we will be able to say what is uh, T value. P less than zero zero one. That is how it has to be written. Now, important point here. Now, the standard deviation value is higher than the mean value. That means this is uh, not normally distributed. So, no harm putting like this because uh, we are just dividing two means into according to two different categories. But you need to appreciate that uh, information as well. Right, so that is how it's written. Now, uh, there are so much of information here, but uh, this is uh, this is what we are going to write in our research report. Here we have group statistics and so on, but don't worry about all this information that is available. Right, if in really necessary, uh, Actually, this significance again we have a significant one tail and two tail. Two tail is the one uh, we are taking. If it is uh, direction is quite uh, sure, then we have can use the single uh, to one sided, but usually use the this value single uh, two tail. Right. Um, maybe uh, that is what I want to tell you in this. Uh, to our session, maybe it will be a little uh, difficult to use those who are not much familiar with. Uh, but uh, those uh, who have familiar with the setup, maybe catch up much easy. And also, some needs to more advanced analysis like linear regression, logistic regression, uh, multivariate analysis, and so on. We will discuss with Dr. Dineshan uh, to have another advanced statistical analysis sessions later. So, if you have a question, uh, let me uh, answer also through the uh, email or whatever when we uh, meet together. But anyway, uh, a few questions that to ask uh, in the chat box. Particular uh, particular way to import data from epinfo into SPSS. Yes, epinfo uh, format. I'm not sure whether we will able to directly take the epinfo format into SPSS, but I'm sure that we will able to do one thing is uh, export the data from the uh, epinfo as Excel format, and through the Excel format we will able to take into the SPSS, or else CSV format, comma uh, separated value format. Both uh, formats are quite uh, efficient, and the PNFO will be able to export the data as CSV format or Excel format for sure. Can you please share the recording data? Uh, of course, uh, DMOI will do that. Uh, so please explain if we expected an answer no as the correct answer, and how to calculate the uh, knowledge score. I think uh, my explanation was uh, clear. Maybe it was asked uh, uh, previously. Uh, is it test? Actually, the SPSS uh, doesn't give a separate uh, uh, test as is it test. But what we are able to do is uh, uh, chi square test and the, uh, the compare the mean t test and so on. And uh, those other statistical tests are uh, being done usually. If we don't have uh, a date to enter, should we leave it empty or should we give zero into the cell? Uh, that is what I said. If you don't have anything to enter, uh, <clears throat> one thing, it's depend on the database again. You would see, uh, do uh, uh, it's a sense. According to the sense, you will be able to give a duration or tentative date. 
if it is okay to have a missing value, just give the missing value as well. Then uh, the database will analyze accordingly. T test is used for categorical and continuous variable. Yes, two groups and the continuous uh, the within the groups we need to have a continuous variable. Like uh, here, uh, as example, I used a knowledge score as a categorical part, but uh, income as a continuous. There are continuous di distribution, but in the two different groups. It's in preferred to use a test when a uh, number is more than 50. Usually what it says is uh, t test uh, could be used comfortably over 30. Uh, but anyway, it is recommended to uh, check for the normal distribution and do it accordingly. And when it is normally uh, not normally distributed, there are different ways of doing it. Or uh, something is we we'll able to go for the non-parametric test. And if it is, uh, we need to uh, check the association. Again, uh, we will able to go into different tests. Anyway, uh, chi-square test is a non-parametric test. And also, if it is a multivariate analysis, we will able to go uh, uh, things like uh, poison, re poison regression analysis. Any other question to ask? Okay, I think I answer all the questions, and uh, uh, let me uh, let me finish the presentation and. Uh, if you have any questions, let me uh, uh, respond to you through the uh, emails or mobile phone, mobile number. Anyway, uh, my email, I'll show you because in the mobile phone, sometimes I will not able to answer since I am in lectures or meetings sometimes, but uh, most probably I will answer through the my email okay thank you very much uh, for giving me this uh, opportunity to uh, share the spss analysis with you so over to you thank you very much sir uh, i expect that you spent a fruitful two hours uh, with a very useful topic about spss which is uh, like the bark on a tree in research activities so I sincerely thank Dr. Suman Andusena, a consultant community physician, deputy regional director of health services, Kaluthara, on behalf of organizers, uh, the Government Medical Officers Association and Society for Health Research and Innovation uh, for allocating your precious time with us. Sir. Also, finally, I thank all the participants for your participation. Uh, and I wish that you will be able to uplift the research activities, the research culture, in medicine. Thank you all.